This morning, we are about to consider in the eyes of him who has said, Behold, I make all things new. The ever new radiance of God to be found in the statement of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Humanity are aware of the simplistic nature of the current revelation proclaimed by an orthodox Christianity. They are aware that in this simplistic concept of believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, there is much to be desired because in reality Belief in Jesus is emphasized by his works and the fruit of his works are in a self-evident manner being proclaimed. By the children of the light that are not being proclaimed by the powers of darkness. And these powers of darkness have created angels of light in the sense that people wear the cross, adorn their buildings with it in many cases, and these buildings become filled with dead men's bones. Do you understand? The buildings become filled with dead men's bones because the people are finding no revivification of the central idea of Jesus Christ. They put him, as the scripture says, to an open shame. Last evening, we listened to our adjoining neighbor church as the wild men of the jungle took over the church and proclaimed by their rock and roll media, not the church of Christ, but the church of Satan. Satan manifesting as a vast network of negativity that spreads abroad over the planetary body, moving and controlling vast numbers of our people by the drum beats of satanic music. It should not really be called music because music indicates a meditative or musing on the consciousness of the I am present. The music is spelled M-U-S-I-C and the M-U-S means to muse or to meditate upon the I am consciousness, I see. When it is actually recognized in the concept of the divine hieroglyph. We are seeing then the trampling upon the altar of God, the desecration in the sanctuary, and the debacle reflected everywhere in life. I am the way clearly makes plain that the I am consciousness is the way to the Christ in other words, man today should understand that mere belief or the affirmation of belief fraudulently presented, saying to someone, I believe in Jesus, is not enough to fulfill the mandates of God. Several years ago, I accompanied the women's clubs by invitation of our community, and I was not the only man, I accompanied the women's clubs into a religious group that was very fundamental in concept. This fundamental religious group was then asked by some of the leading women as to what they believed in. And the man that was the guy spoke to them and said, you know, ladies, 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, Christ was born. 
and we are proclaiming Christ. The simplistic affirmation of the concept of mere belief in Jesus is a parody upon the true law of God because belief denotes total involvement or immersion by man in the Christ way. I am the way. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. He was not referring to the embodiment of himself as the man, Jesus Christ. Those who are familiar with the genealogy of names understand this, if they are careful to think about it, because years ago in England, blacksmiths, of whom there were many, proclaimed themselves as the village smith. They took such uh, first names as John or Peter or any name they wanted to take and they became like Peter the blacksmith or Randolph the blacksmith and finally they dropped the black and they dropped the the and they became plain Randolph Smith. The office of the Messiah or the Christ was promised to the children of Israel long ago. And as you know, he did come in Bethlehem of Judea. He came as a promised one, a manifestation of God. There is no doubt that he was the only begotten Son of God in the same sense that we are also by divine commandment once we experience the new birth a joint heir with him in the concept of becoming the only begotten of the Father. God does not in any of his concepts show the sin of partiality but condemns it in man proclaiming the mutuality and equality of life. Therefore his laws do not proclaim it either. There are, however, a large number of people in the Orthodox world today who believe in a very simplistic doctrine by direct design because way back in the time of the Emperor Justinian and the time of the Empress Theodora, Christian doctrine was altered. And it was altered so deliriously and so deliciously as to create the framework for a pseudo-proclamation of the reality of God. It is not right, yet millions are deluded by it, and the churches of Christ then in this latter days are becoming the church of Satan. People look up at San Francisco and they shudder in horror because of Anton LaVey or Anton Levy, whom they see appear on our television screens with horns and bald head shaven, red garments and black garments adorning his person, and they say, this man is indicative of the devil. But I fear more the angel that comes as an angel of light and in reality does not understand the first principles of the kingdom of heaven. First of all, we do wrong if we suspect that Adam and Eve were the first people ever to live upon this planet. Why? For many reasons. First of all, we should understand that Cain wanted to get married. He went instead into the evolution of the land of Nod, and that doesn't mean the land of sleep. There was a country called Nod. And he went there to find a wife. We find then that in reality, in this foreverness of God, we today who study history and learn that the earth is millions of years old and then that our civilization in Bible history is recorded about 5,000 years of Bible history, realize there is something decidedly wrong with our intelligence or our apprehensions if we suspect that the earth 
was only 5,000 years in evolution, in spiritual evolution. Isn't that ridiculous? It is perfectly ridiculous. We know who have read the Akashic records and also who have seen the physical evidences in the sedimentary rock, we know that there have been multitudes of cataclysms on this planet where the mountains came up and uh, the plains would even drop. We've seen terrible cataclysms and upheavals, the sinking of islands and the rising of others. We see this in history, the history of the rocks themselves. We can recognize this. And then we learn in the Akashic records of the existence of other worlds. We learn of the planet Maldek. And this is in the asteroid belt that is in our own solar system, self-evident of the destruction of planets who did not fulfill their spiritual evolution. The world today does not understand the way I am the way. They do not understand the divine nature and the laws of karma. They do not understand that each man will receive a reward according to his works. And they think in their error of mind that this abrogates the grace of Christ. It does not. The grace of Christ should be understood. For Christ was he who existed before the earth was even formed. Christ was the first emanation of the light that came from God, the living word. Das Wort. The word. And the word was the word of God himself and he identified with the word that he had spoken as though the word were his son. In other words, his intelligence. The intelligence of God was used in the formation of the earth. Yet, we find no record in the Bible of television sets, of electric lights, of automobiles as such, and of many of the scientific wonders of the world. All of this emerged from the mind of God, and there is nothing made that was made that did not emerge from the mind of God through Christ. And the Christ I'm speaking of is not the man Jesus, but the spirit of the living Christ, which is a great outpouring of divine light from the heart of God, and all of us have a little bit of this Christ, this universal light of God manifest in our hearts. So, by error and illusion, the powers of darkness successfully fabricate religions which deny the real presence of God in man. The religions lie to the people. They tell error to the people. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, they inoculate people with a little religion as proof against the real thing. Obviously, humanity do not understand the words of Jesus. If they did, they could not allow rock and roll music in their churches and sanctuaries. If they understood the words of Jesus, they would understand that the apostasy that is occurring today in the world is not an apostasy of the letter. It is the apostasy of the spirit. Because man does not understand who and what he is. In reality, man is endowed by God from the foundation of the world by the principles of the living Christ investing those who will accept him with the radiance that will light their path as they walk with understanding. You see what I mean? Now, however, we have the principle of condemnation entering in. People are made to feel if they do not believe the letter of the law that they have sinned. And yet the world today is filled with a number of denominations. These denominations all proclaim themselves as the only church of God. 
A few of them entertain the idea of liberalism or ecunimism, and they say, well, we will open our gates. We will accept everyone. But do they? That's the question. They often honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. People are more interested in the proclamation of self-righteousness than they are the acceptance of the righteousness of God because they do not understand the laws of God. They do not understand the law that has made men truly equal in the eyes of God. And what do we have existing today? A spirit of condemnation that has pervaded the very fabric and roots of our society. So that people today basically are looking for something to criticize about everyone they meet. They go down the streets into the marketplaces of life and they meet people. And the first thing they look for is an analytical consciousness. They want to draw upon a form of analysis so they can say, what makes this person tick? What is the basis of this? But the components of their judgment are insufficient for this day. I hope you understand me. I will try to make it plain. They lack the understanding factors that would enable them to actually make these judgments they seek to make. When God is clearly proclaimed, judge not lest ye be judged. Judgment and condemnation are not our role. We are not interested in condemning either orthodoxy or civilization in a secular society. We are interested in proclaiming the truth of the living God. I am the way. The way of the I am is a magnificent way because it relates to the God in man. Go back to that which was taught by Amenhotep IV, which incidentally became very much involved in the teachings of Christ Jesus. Amenhotep IV proclaimed in his monotheism the Son as Ra, Eitan, the light. He knew in his own heart, as did those who followed him, that the sun was not actually to be worshipped, but the sun was only a symbol of the Christ, of the light. And it was the greatest concentration of light in this solar system from a physical standpoint. Now, wasn't it? The physical sun still is that. It is an enormous concentration of light and light energy. But those today, modern day man says that the ancients, the old ones, worshiped the sun. They never worshiped the sun, but the spiritual sun behind it. The spiritual light, of which the physical light is but a counterpart. Let us understand then not the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law brings about a divine equality in every man. But by the process of guilt for the ingrained wrongs of society and for the darkness of our age, individuals are made to feel worth less instead of worth something. He who said, my eye is on the sparrow, or proclaimed it in everything that he did, has an interest in every one of you in this room and in every single child of God that he has created upon this planetary body. But we should understand the duality of the proclamation. Take dominion over the earth. We are given that mandate. You and I are given that mandate. Take dominion over the earth. Who's earth? Well, of course, the outer world, but the inner man first. We need to keep the city of God within the environs of our own manifestation. We need to control our own mind and being. We haven't? Well, that's too bad. But tomorrow is another day, and we can start where we failed to do the right things and understand the law of God, not as the law that needs or requires abrogation, but requires the affirmation of the grace that we receive from God because our attitude is refreshing and we open the windows of our consciousness to receive the magnificent light of the brotherhood. Oh yes, the brotherhood. 
We're dealing with the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. There are so many who proclaim this, but who do not understand it. So I want to postulate today, but it is not really a postulation, I must confess. It is a statement of fact. Let it be a postulation to those who deem it necessary in order for them to even consider it. Let it be a statement of fact to those who know it. I say that by Christ all things were made. I am the way, that he is the way. That this Christ, who is also resident in the fullness of the Godhead in Jesus, can also be resident in you without it desecrating or robbing the Godhead. A man can become the fullness of God bodily on this planet or he can graduate in the ritual of the ascension which Jesus did and ascend into heaven as he did in a cloud and be received out of the sight of men. All of this can occur and does occur. It has occurred to many people on this planet and they have disappeared from the eyes of man because they become a part of the kingdom of heaven. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, nor suffer thine holy one to see corruption. I proclaim to you today that if the beautiful emanation of the light of God that never fails in the most minute form is present in you, I said in you, then you don't have to worry that you're going to die and not be anymore. You will never die as long as that spark of Christ is in you and I will tell you why. Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. As long as that is in you, they can kill your body, you can lose your body, they can torture you, they can do anything they wish to do and never will they succeed in entering the realms of God that are in the higher octaves of light. Oh yes, there are realms outside of this world in which we live outside of the physical body that are invaded by the powers of darkness. The princes of this world and those who manipulate mankind's minds, they dwell in the astral realm. I remember several years ago a terrible accident occurred. We were driving along. Suddenly on a Sunday afternoon I met a car. I did not see exactly who was in that car. But the car veered into us to come directly head on into us. And there was no escaping that. This is what we did. We veered a little, but not enough, and they veered enough. And when they veered, they went into the ditch, plowed up the fields, and after traveling about 200 feet up into a plowed field, the doors of the car swung open and out came four or five bloody children. The mother smashed her face against the vehicle and she had caused the accident by leaning upon the man who was driving and they were all tumbling out of the car and I came up as fast as I could and suddenly the man got up and he ran around all over in a circle and he says, I can't find my body. Where is my body? I can't find my body. Someone help me, help me, help me quick. He says, I can't find my body. The whole thing is that he, through the accident, suffered a trauma, which trauma, in a sense, knocked him partially out of the body. So the body was running around, but it was not fully inhabited by the consciousness and the being of that man. And he was developing this sense of illusion that his body did not exist. He could not find it, you see. And there are realms to which people go when they become victims of accidents or pass through the change called death. Some people go directly up to heaven in the sense that they go into the higher octaves of consciousness, you see. Others go into astral hells. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. I will tell you why it is important for everyone to follow God as dear children. The reason it is necessary and important is because if we do nothing about our soul, about that spirit, we neglect the spark of the Christ that is within us. I can assure you, and by the way, this is why the churches want people to have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. They want them to do this. 
They want them to just come and get a little inoculation of religion so that they once in a while can go to church and once in a while sing a few religious songs or think of God when something happens, you see. But I want to tell you why it is so important that you actually follow God as dear children. The reason for it is my kingdom, Jesus proclaimed, is not of this world. He refused the temporal promise. He did not want to supplant Caesar. He paid tribute to him. And he created the great empire of Christendom upon this planet, but in reality, that was not what he wanted. He created it in the sense that it became a follower after him. But in reality, and he worked for the church, his kingdom was not of this world. His kingdom was of the world to come. And I want to then bring out to all of you the concept of the plane of consciousness and existence. This world is the densest strata, the densest manifestation of substance that there is in the whole universe. I don't mean in the universe in the sense of stars. I mean this strata where we live today, we brush our teeth, we get up and we do things. This is a dense strata in which we live. There are refined places in consciousness where we can have form as we now know it and it will be a more delicate, more ethereal manifestation. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Does it make sense to you at all? Uh, several people, they say that no one that's ever died has ever come back to talk about it. That is a lie. There have been people whose hearts have been stopped. I believe that our good doctor Otto Isaac told me a story that happened in a hospital several years ago. He told of a man who was, I think, either seriously injured or being operated on. I'm not sure what the situation was. Did he actually die? Yes, he was out of his body completely. He had been pronounced dead by two doctors. I see. And they had draped a sheet over him. The sheet was over him. Yes. Uh -huh. But he went out of the body then, and he was floating around from floor to floor in the hospital. And he traveled all around in this hospital, and he heard people talking, and he had great awareness of the situation. Yes. And even rooms that, that uh, he had never seen physically. There was nobody in the floors that where he went to, and he was wondering why there weren't any patients in there. And he, he later on, then after he uh, got into his body again, he asked the doctors why there weren't any patients in those rooms, and they were so amazed to find that he knew what was going on in the hospital. That's right. And this is a similar matter involving a story told by Norman Vincent Peale in Guideposts that uh, recounts the airplane uh, pilot who crashed his plane and he was laying outside the plane in a field and while uh, the plane is laying there erect and his body's laying there, he's about 500 feet in the air above the plane and it's a beautiful sunny day and he's looking down sees his body laying there and he sees the people coming across the field, sees them cut the wires and he sees them coming and hears one woman say, I'll bet he was drunk to hit those high tension wires or something to that effect. And so uh, they all gather and cluster around his body and then uh, as they do this, suddenly he opens his eyes because he starts back from up in the air down toward his body and he said that he felt very well and everything until the time came that he actually plunged into his body when there was a vortex seized him and he lost consciousness as he plunged into his body. And then he said that he opened his eyes and he saw the woman in the crowd that had proclaimed him drunk and he said, Madam, I was not drunk. <laughs> and of course she was way across the area where he never could have heard her and so this amazed her. And the situation shows very clearly that there is an existence uh, after death and that there are planes of consciousness because we don't have to necessarily deal with just the plane of this world's consciousness. We know that angelic beings have been seen by very rational people and we also know that people have all kinds of illusions in this world. For example, go before a trial judge sometime or to a courtroom and notice how that one incident is on trial and all of the witnesses sometimes may disagree as to what really happened. One says that John shot so-and-so first, and the other one says that Bill shot so-and-so. I mean, they go on back and forth, 
and the whole thing becomes a, a cluster of, of confusion. No one can figure it all out. It's almost impossible to understand it. So I am the way. We come back to this. Christ is the way. And there are planes above this, and there is a brotherhood that's existed, oh, a million years ago and long before that. There have been manifestations of life on other planets, and of course we're not concerned with all of that. We do happen to know that there existed years ago, long ago, Lemuria. And that California here is a portion of the old Lemuria. It actually extended out into the Pacific Ocean. And the Easter Islands are actually a part of that old Lemurian civilization. Some of us have soul memories of Lemuria from the past. And then you go back to the lost continent of Atlantis. The evidences for Atlantis are many. And these are coming out also. So it's really ridiculous to suspect that a God just suddenly created the world uh, about the time of Adam and Eve and then put the people down there and that was it. The evolutions of God are millions of years old as man judges time. Yet, of course, God possesses the power to compress time as far as the human sense is concerned because it's like someone said, the tree fell and no one is there to, to listen to it. Did it make any noise? And people say that it didn't make any noise because no one was there to listen to it. And the only way you can have noise is to have an ear. If you don't have an ear, you can't have noise, you see. Isn't that an interesting factor? Well, that's the same with creation. If people were not yet created, it wouldn't make any difference whether God spent 10 million years or, or 50 million aeons. It wouldn't make any difference how long he took to create the, the earth. But we know it is very fearfully and wonderfully made. So we should understand that all of these things exist and yet you don't find records of it in the Bible. Those fundamentalists who say, I will only believe the Bible are limiting themselves to their belief in our current civilization. Is it any wonder that we have destroyed our civilization, our spiritual civilization, because we don't believe the reality of God? You see that? We think that the earth's only 5,000 years old and yet science tells us otherwise. So we deny God. How very silly. Because what has happened here is the fact that fundamental religion has proclaimed lies to people. And it has done this deliberately under the direction of the powers of darkness. That is what is wrong with our world. The liberation of the Christ power that we proclaim, our brotherhood does not say, we're going to give it all to you today. And all of you people know that we have to study to show ourselves approved unto God. This takes a long time. A lot of study is involved in this. And uh, because you're going to hear the dictation of last evening, once again, our beloved Pallas Athena, the goddess of truth, you will notice how she mentions in her dictation that even at her level, there is much to learn or to be learned. I marvel sometimes at how when we conduct a seminar here, a lot of people that should be at the seminar or enrolled in our university will say, well, I have enough of that knowledge, I already know that, and I don't have to enroll myself. Yet, you who know, know that we have taught things that have never before been expounded anyway. If the goddess of light, or the goddess of truth, or cosmic being, Saint Germain, or our beloved Jesus, can proclaim this ongoingness of God, then certainly we ought to be willing to learn ourselves. And humanity ought to be willing to learn. But what is it that has caused so much of this trouble? The stand pat idea. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do you know that they actually think that just simply to believe that Jesus was born is enough to have them saved? That's how far and to what extent the vicarious atonement is gone. The vicarious atonement has gone that far that they think if they just believe, and that, of course, is the lie of the enemy. That's the most diabolical thing in the world. That does the most despot to the spirit of Christ because it fulfills the letter of the law without fulfilling the spirit. The letter says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But it means the spirit 
not the words alone. And the Spirit of the law proclaims that we have to approach perfection as Moses approached it when he, when he took his shoes from off his feet and approached the burning bush and he saw it there and he saw it was not consumed and out of the bush came the voice of God saying, I am that I am. Well, who shall I say sent me? I am sent you. In other words, what is it? It is being. What is being? It's existence. What is existence? Do you understand? It is permanent existence. Does man have permanent existence? He does not. Would man want permanent existence? He would not. Would man actually want to live the humdrum existence he has, even if he can fulfill all his desires? Of course he wouldn't. He would finally get ultimately so bored, and people do, that they jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. They take up all kinds of classes in various crafts and things so they can do something with their time. They become singers. They become ballerinas. They become writers of novels. Novels on murder and all kinds of things. Is this the plan of God? Of course it isn't. I am the way. Now let's look at the truth. I am the truth. When you think of the I am as truth, you should understand that the truth is the spirit of God. And the spirit of God is involved in immortal life. What has this age done as far as the truth is concerned? They are feeding people food. Hot fat fried food. Food that's sprayed with chemicals. They have created a chemical death in the atmosphere of this planet. And all over, all they think of is making money. But they don't care how they make it. They don't care as to whether or not they can make it by selling actually death to the people in the food they sell them. People become prematurely aged. They become affected mentally, emotionally. Their body is starved for certain vitamins that God himself has placed in nature. But you don't find this in the Bible. It doesn't say a word about it in the Bible. So the well-being of man, if relied on strictly as far as the letter of the law is concerned, would be more or less vegetation. I don't mean vegetation, I mean becoming a vegetable. Excuse me. Man would become a vegetable. Nothing would happen, you see. Now then you come to I am the light. I didn't want to enlarge too much on the truth because these are all interrelated with the Christ spirit. I am the light. God is the light. What does that mean in terms of ongoingness? Well, first of all, you and me were there when God created the planet. How, where were we, you say? I don't remember it. You were there in the consciousness of God. You were a part of God even as you are a part now. What you think of as your individuality is really not anything because you aren't the same person you were when you were a little girl or a little boy, are you? Are you the same person that existed as a baby that was rocked in the cradle? Of course not. How many changes have you gone through? How many changes? And we're still going through changes. And we understand in part now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. What does that mean? We have to know as we are known. I am the light. In other words, dear hearts, unless your life becomes a life capable of identification with the life of God, with its tremendously facile outreach, and creative energy, unless you become one with God. Look at the flower outside the window there, that little blue flower. Can you create a flower like that? Look at your hands, wiggle them, move your fingers. As you move your fingers, can you create and endow a body as God did? Well, even if you could, it would not prove that you were completely a master of yourself. Man has so far to go before he can say, I am the light. And here the simple statement of Jesus is not even understood by people. They say, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And they think that that means that the man Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And they think if they just believe that he was born, that that's the end of everything, because his grace has vicariously freed them already. Well, if this were true, actually literally true, then you see the situation involving 
the sin of Adam, when Adam ate the apple. Why did he eat the apple? Adam ate the fruit. He didn't eat an apple, but people think of it as an apple. So his wife handed him the fruit, and she says, let's eat. So he ate. And he says, the woman gave it to me. He started blaming the woman, you know. You take notice of that. He blamed the woman. And they still do that today, to a certain degree. People blame the woman for everything, you see. Because the woman, you know, symbolizes this outer creation. To the spirit symbolizes God the Father. And the womb man, or the woman, is creation. I mean, all nature is the woman, mother nature. And the spirit impregnates that. And people blame nature. They blame the outer expression. They blame the church. They blame the ministers. They blame everything what they ought to blame for their troubles. And the troubles start right here with ourselves. We ought to know that you don't just think in terms of Jesus being born and he did everything for you. Let's get back to that apple now. You come to that fruit. God gives man the tree of life and then he puts in the garden the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the one he says you can't eat of. He didn't say they couldn't eat of the tree of life. You know. But they ate of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. And what happened to them after they ate of the knowledge of good and evil? Well, then we understand that death became known by man. It may have even existed before in the sense of change, but man didn't know it, so nobody told him that. If you took a child and never told him anything about death, they probably wouldn't even worry about it if no one else ever told them about it. But here's what happens. Christ comes to the cross, and the Christian church says that because of the sin of Adam, because of Adam's sin, Man is, is, is actually dying. And now because Christ died, man is going to live. Well, doesn't it make plain common sense to you that if this is a mass situation, that the mass sin of Adam becomes the mass sin of everybody, then the mass righteousness of Christ becomes the immediate realization of everybody. So we should have never had another death on this earth after Christ hung on the cross, according to the concepts of Christianity. He's the end of it, you see. But it isn't that way. The soul that sinneth, it shall die, the Bible says. But what is sin? You see, we have to learn what it is. I'm not going to talk about it today. It's not my desire. I'd take hours to go into this whole explanation, as you know. But what I want to do is make you to realize, if I can, the fact that life is not the way it seems to be on the earth today. And that we are living in the days of apostasy where the apostasy has invaded the church. And it's been there a long time, by the way. That's why you had all the trouble that James Michener wrote about in Hawaii, where the Christian missionaries went over. That's why Cotton Mather existed. That's why people have been so austere about religion. They have no vibrancy to them. They have no life to them. There is no Christ in them that is actually multiplying. The master that multiplied the loaves and the fishes for the multitude and fed the multitude, he doesn't exist in the church today. People feel the dryness of it all. And what do they do to make it up? They have beautiful choirs. They have lovely music. And that's fine. But even the music is perverted to a form of brittleness in many cases because it mocks the people's lives. It seems to be something they're waiting for in the distant, Far hereafter, I say to you today, it is alive today. The Christ lives in you. And the vibrancy of the Christ lives in you. You don't have to have the sense of sin. I don't say you should go out here and commit sin. I say that you should go out here and commit righteousness because righteousness will bring you salvation. I believe that the righteous are those who respond to the Christ and to God because they are endowed with a mantle of his grace. Consciously, they realize it. We have to re-educate our thinking. We have to begin to think in terms of immortality. We have to be able to think in terms of I am the life. The life is in your God presence. The life is in the Christ up here. Right up here. 
That's in the chart. But in reality, that's in you. Because right above your head, in space, in a spatial relationship, God is. And Christ is up there. There's an individualized Christ presence for every man. Just as Christ at the Last Supper broke the bread, so God broke the bread. The bread is only symbolical. The crumbs that fall from his table are actually shared by us all. But as St. Paul said, the stars differ from another in glory. So are those that rise from the dead. You don't have to die to rise from the dead. People are already dead in trespasses and sins and in this consciousness of trespasses and sins. They've died to the vitality of God. They've died to the reality of God. We then have to understand this if we're going to actually know our place in the schemata of divine life. Isn't it true? It's all there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's in the life of God that is in us. And that's the life that's in everybody. But who proclaims it as being in everybody? They all say, it is appointed unto a man once to die and after death the judgment. That's in the Bible too. It's not understood by people. It says in the Bible, there is nothing new under the sun. And then in another place it says, behold, I make all things new. Is the Bible wrong? Of course not. People have to learn how to interpret it by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. They have to rightly divide the Word. They have to break the bread. They have to understand the meaning of the sacred Eucharist. What is the sacred Eucharist? The sacred Eucharist is actually the body of God. But it's not, as some have supposed it to be, just the bread and the wine. It's the breaking of the body. It means we've all got a portion of it. All substance is actually a part of God, a part of the Spirit. And the life of God is everywhere. Even the piano there, sitting there, an inert object. The piano has atoms in it, electrons. Do you realize that there are universes, in a sense, intricately constructed within the very wood itself? Long ago it was chopped down. It's no longer connected with the sap of the tree, but it's not cut out of the universe because it is substance. And wherever there is substance, air, water, earth, fire, all material, that substance is hallowed. We should understand this. People don't. Instead of that, they conceive of life as dying and decaying. Well, why is it dying and decaying? Because they have not understood it. And they will not accept the truth. They won't listen to it. Unless I was born into the faith of one of these churches and was ordained by them to proclaim the teachings that they admit to, they would never accept anything I say as having a word of truth in it. Do you understand? They'd never accept it. Therefore, there is no progress because they have codified the word of God. They have taken out its vibrancy, all of its life, and therefore the people themselves are standing there like a dried up last year's vegetable. And they'll wither away and nothing can possibly revive them but the spirit. And the spirit is what they've got to use. We proclaim it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And we today realize that when man accepts this, that the dead shall live right there in man. Because otherwise, you see, they're already dead. Longfellow said, he says, they have never lived. They can wait to die. Let us understand the meaning of life. Our life is in Christ and our life is hid with Christ in God. When we understand that spark that is within us, we see the equality of God. You know what we start to do? We start to do exactly what Khalil Gibran, who wrote the prophet, proclaimed. He said it is a flame spirit, speaking of God. He said it is a flame spirit gathering more of itself. And all of us have the responsibility, as did St. Francis and all of the, the great uh, saints and sages of past ages, and even of this current age. They've all had to gather more of God. They go out into the harvest fields of life and they try to find more of God and bring this into themselves. They know very well they're not taking a thing away from anyone else. 
but they need to gather it for themselves. We must then gather and gather and gather more and more of the Christ and more and more of God. The idea that we've got it all is the complacency in attitude that destroys our progress. That is what breaks people up, is the concept that they've got it all, and yet, in Christ, we can hold that concept that we have it all because he has already manifested. You see, from the beginning, Christ was everything. First God, then Christ, then manifestation. So that is all there in what we've got of it. But the way we have to get more of it is because we have to sweep more into our consciousness because it's our consciousness of the greatness of this that is deficient. The deficiency is in that. It's not in the Christ. There's never a deficiency in the Christ. But in the sense that we can get more, you see. We've already got everything and don't realize it. We have to increase our realization and awareness of God. This is a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed, and the dead in Christ shall arise triumphant. Thank you.